Did you know there's a geologic fault running right through a popular state park in central Missouri? At Hot Tonka State Park in the northwestern Ozarks, you can see some impressive bedrock deformation along the trace of the Red Arrow Fault. Unfortunately, the park doesn't provide much interpretation of this really cool feature. The only mention of it in a trail guide is a bit unclear and misleading. So in this video, we'll explore physical evidence of faulting in multiple locations along the Turkey Pen Hollow Trail, show how the resulting fault trace affects the park's landscape and even ecology, and provide some regional geologic context. Hint, this isn't the only fault in the area. Let's first look at evidence for the fault on the ground by following a clockwise loop around the six and a half mile Turkey Pen Hollow Trail, focusing on the southern portion. Our first stop is deep in Turkey Pen Hollow itself. The bedrock in this region normally lies flat, and sure enough, the valley bottom here is formed by flat layers of the Gunter Sandstone. See our separate video on how this unit affects many other aspects of the area. However, as you head downstream, you'll suddenly encounter sandstone beds that are strongly tilted down to the southwest. The sandstone also begins to show signs of deformation, such as microfaults offsetting the otherwise parallel bedding planes. But as you continue further southwest, everything seems to go back to normal. Further along, while hiking down a gentle stream valley, you'll notice more flat sandstone layers along the trail. But soon, the sandstone suddenly becomes strongly tilted to the southwest again, creating a steep ridge all but blocking the valley, through which the stream has carved a narrow chasm. Standing at this site, you can see that this ridge of tilted sandstone runs northwest to southeast, maintaining its topographic shape right up either side of the valley, though this is easier to see in person than on camera. After passing through some lovely glades set on more horizontal rock layers, the trail loops up and around a small stream valley. Just like at Site 2, the stream coming in from the northeast follows a fairly broad valley with flat bedrock layers until it suddenly pinches through a narrow rock cut right along the trail, where once again the sandstone becomes sharply tilted to the southwest. And if you look around, you'll see another significant tilted rock ridge running northwest-southeast. So let's put all of these observations together. At sites 1, 2, and 3, we have normally flat sandstone beds suddenly sharply tilted to the southwest along a northwest-southeast axis defined by a distinct raised ridge and showing signs of internal deformation. Notice that there's also a series of narrow valleys cutting into the ridges along this same axis. Taken together, there's clear evidence of a linear zone cutting across the landscape, within which the rocks are tilted and fractured, and along which unusually aligned valleys and ridges have formed. Sure enough, the Red Arrow Fault has been mapped running northwest to southeast right through this zone. Broader scale geologic maps usually represent faults as solid lines, but zoomed in like this, a shaded zone rather than a single line seems appropriate for a couple reasons. First, a tilted fault plane doesn't intersect three-dimensional topography in a straight line, and second, the fault itself isn't a perfect plane but rather a zone of deformed bedrock. The Red Arrow Fault is actually part of a much larger regional trend of northwest-southeast faults. In case you were worried, these faults are very old and quite inactive. There's no meaningful modern seismic risk here, which is a relief given that one of these faults runs right by the big dam forming Lake of the Ozarks. The fault is what geologists call a normal fault, meaning that the rock above the fault has moved downward relative to that below the fault. In this case, the southwestern side has dropped up to 100 feet relative to the northeastern side offsetting the bedrock on either side both vertically and horizontally. This is where the park's trail brochure is unfortunately misleading. Overall, bedrock layers haven't been pushed up over one another in what geologists would call a reverse or thrust fault. The motion is the other way around, with layers sliding away from one another. Three other notes on geologic context here. First, even this conceptual drawing is too simplistic, as it leaves out a key feature we observed that the sandstone isn't just broken, but actually folded downward. So this drawing might actually best represent what we see on the ground, with the rock being dragged and deformed into a downward curve as it nears the core of the fault zone. Second, astute observers might notice some small-scale cross-bedding within certain sandstone outcrops, but this internal sedimentary structure is quite distinct from the large-scale structural deformation of the bedrock. For a better explanation of cross-bedding and other examples in Missouri, check out our other videos linked below. Third, the fault affects landscape patterns beyond the park, too. Just to the northwest, notice how the Niangua River takes a sharp 90-degree bend to the southeast and flows straight southeast for a stretch before taking another sharp 90-degree turn back to the northeast and resuming its normal winding course. Sure enough, this unusual pattern maps right onto the trace of the Red Arrow Fault, 
and likely relates to the increased erodibility of bedrock along the fault zone, just like the other smaller linear valleys within the park that we pointed out earlier. We've already seen how this fault affects the local landscape, by influencing the formation of linear ridges and valleys across the park's terrain. But its impact extends to the local ecology as well. Glades at Hahatanka tend to form along higher slopes underlain by dolomites of the Gasconade Formation. However, where the fault disrupts the bedrock, the Gasconade reappears lower on the slope, allowing an unusual second belt of glades to develop, separated by the deformed sandstone along the fault trace. If this intrigues you, find out more in our full video on how geology influences glades at Hahatanka. To wrap up, if we could, we would revise the official trail guide to read something like this. At the junction with the backpack campsite spur, a large outcrop of rock represents one of several remnants of the Red Arrow Fault, which runs through this part of Camden County. Long ago, movement along this northwest-southeast fault line resulted in the bedrock to the southwest dropping by up to 100 feet relative to the bedrock to the northeast. At multiple places along the trail, you can see normally flat-lying sandstone layers strongly tilted by fault movement, and narrow channels where streams crossing the fault line have cut through ridges of folded rock blocking their path. Also, the park's digital trail map marks the Red Arrow Fault as a single location, at the junction with the spur trail to a backpacking campsite, equivalent to what we called Site 2. This map was probably originally intended for the coarse scale of a paper map, but zooming into it digitally reveals that it's a bit off relative to the topography. The trail junction is actually further southwest, where the fault-created rock ridge runs across the valley, marking the real location of the fault trace. As should be clear by now, the Red Arrow Fault isn't actually a single location, but a geologic structure running across the landscape, which intersects the Turkey Pen Hollow Trail at multiple locations. The location mentioned in the trail guide is the most dramatic and easiest to recognize, but also the easiest to misunderstand. We'll close by letting me explain this on site. So people naturally see this creek cut through the rock and think that that fault is running right through here. The reality is the exact opposite. It's 90 degrees off. What's actually happened here is there is a big fault running through here, but it's running across the view. What's happened is the rocks here have been faulted and dropped like this and tilted into the fault valley. The actual fault valley, if you could look left and right from the camera view, is running sideways up and down the valley here. This creek is cutting across the fault plain through these tilted and faulted rocks and creating this really neat location. So when you're hiking around here, this is a great place to stop for lunch. Make sure you look around and look for the actual fault trace running sideways, not thinking it's running down the creek through here.